Okay, we were taking another integral. We've got the integral of natural log x over natural log x plus 1 all squared dx. Okay, I know exactly three different ways to do it, and they're all kind of the same thing. One is integration by parts, two is reverse product rule, and three is reverse quotient rule. And I'm tempted to use the reverse product rule because what you could do is if you add a plus one right there, then you get cancellation, and then you need to add a minus one, which allows us to split this into two fractions. But I basically just did that on a problem from the Vienna integration meeting, and I just don't like to repeat myself that much. So what I'm gonna do instead is use quotient rule, and I haven't done that for a while looking at this as something that's going to be the quotient rule. And the thing that's nice about it is it's kind of tricky because the numerator is not really set up for us at all. So just recalling the quotient rule, if we have two functions in terms of x written as a fraction like f over g, the derivative of this is going to be f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. So in order for this to work nice, what I want is our integral, all this, to be in exactly this form. And so we can start with what we know. It's gonna be hard to equate natural log x to all this stuff. But the reason I decided to use reverse quotient rule is because I want this piece right here to be our g. So we're saying g is gonna be natural log x plus one. And then we're gonna need a g prime value and that's gonna be easy. So we just take a derivative of this and we just get one over x. So we know our denominator is going to work, but now we need to focus on this numerator. And we have no idea what our f is. We know what our g is. So we're going to have some kind of equation. We're going to say f prime times g, which is this, our f prime times natural log x plus 1 minus another unknown f that we don't know times this, 1 over x. And this all needs to be equal to natural log x. What I can do is kind of distribute this out, and we're going to say f prime x times natural log x plus distributing f prime, one, f prime times 1 is going to be f prime minus f 1 over x, and this needs to be equal to ln x. Now, solving these can sometimes be pretty tricky, but we can kind of, if we make some assumptions and we kind of break this up, what I can do is, so we have our ln x here and we have our ln x here, and we also... I mean, there's a coefficient we can create on the ln x1. If we want to add a second part to this, we can just kind of like add a zero on here. And then what you can do is we can kind of equate, we want this piece to be zero. And if our coefficient here is one, we're saying f prime is one. Now this won't always work. I'm kind of making some assumptions that it's set up this way, right? Because somehow maybe a natural log could come out of this second part, I don't know. But making this assumption, we're really assuming that f prime is going to be 1. So let's kind of put that down over here. We're saying f prime is equal to 1. Well, then I can just integrate, go backwards in order to get our f value. If I integrate this, we have our f is just going to be x plus c. So now we have it set up where this part works. We have 1 times ln x here. For this second part, for this to be 0, okay, so we know f prime is going to be 1 minus our f x plus c times 1 over x. But then you'll notice really what's going to work is when c is zero. So I'm just going to get rid of that because that's not doing anything for us right there because now x is going to cancel with 1 over x here and be 1. 1 minus 1 is going to be zero. And so this part works right here. This part works. And so we have everything we need right here. So now to make this all really clear, let's just rewrite our integral using this, what we have here, just putting it in exactly this form so we can see it clearly. So our f prime is going to be 1 times our g, which is going to be natural log x plus 1 here. And then for the second part, we have minus f times g prime. So f is just going to be x and g prime 1 over x. And then the denominator is just going to be unchanged. And now looking at it this way, you can kind of see why these can be hard to do or it's kind of complicated because what we've done is this whole numerator is still just natural log x because this last part is 1, so we just have plus 1 minus 1. But when you write it out like this, it perfectly fits the product rule. Now, in order to finish this off, what we're doing here is we have the, sorry, I said product rule, I meant quotient rule here. So in order to finish this off, what we want to do, we have this whole thing, our quotient rule, we have this inside of an integral, inside of an integral. But here we're integrating a derivative, so that's just going to give back this part right here. So our solution is just going to be f over g. But we know what that is from our little table over here. f is going to be x g is going to be natural log of x plus 1. So for my final solution is we just have x over natural log x plus 1 
add a plus C, and that's it. Okay, there you have it. Good example with the reverse quotient rule. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.